We're answering your questions today. We're talking about an all-time great quarterback. Yes. We're talking about an incoming freshman that you might not be thinking about. And we're going to get weird with some SEC schedules in the third segment, all coming up today on the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. He is Daniel. I am Clint. Together, we are Locked On Bulldogs. Thanks for making us your first listen. We really appreciate it. All of you loyal 199ers that are out there who listen all the way to the third segment, all the way past, we appreciate you. You're the best. It's the reason why we do this podcast. Uh, and it's the reason we talk them dogs as well as SEC football. Today, we are talking about three things. Mailbag questions sent in by you, the listener, mm -hmm. um, and no gary or ian i don't know your name bama fan we're not going to have a live call-in show because we don't want people like you calling in like I, I just i don't know how to be more plain about it right it's we're not going to because we don't want to and I'm at some point we might Twitter, want, to, want to and then we will so that's because that this works. is this is our podcast i get to decide mm -hmm. what to do on our podcast um but we do okay. want to answer your questions um, we, we want do to want to do. talk about what you want to talk about if you have things this off season as we roll through spring practice we're getting closer to g day we got lots Come to on. discuss about that um uh as we roll through the off season if you've got things that you want us to cover feel free to reach out locked on bulldogs at gmail.com some of you emailed in your questions uh, or at dogs podcast on the artist formerly known as twitter you can get at us that way um, but Clint, let's jump into it and um, let's talk about Carson Beck. Shall so we? the question comes in as as follows from CSATL Dog on Twitter. If Carson Beck has the season this year that we all think he's going to, okay. is he going to be the second best quarterback in Georgia history behind Stetson Bennett? Of course, um, who's the greatest college quarterback in college football history? And therefore, since Georgia is a college football team, he would be the greatest quarterback in Georgia history. Nobody's surpassing him. But Carson Beck, does he have a chance to be the second greatest quarterback in Georgia history? What are your thoughts on this? Because I have a very strong opinion about it. Um, here's the... Here are the ingredients, if you will, that Carson Beck could have the single greatest season of a UGA quarterback and not be first best quarterback. Because, again, you don't get two rings and go no. down the rankings. He is. That's why Stetson Bennett is up there. I don't care about anything else. It's all about them rings. But he does have a chance to have the single greatest um, season of any UGA quarterback. Now we've heard Kirby talking about all manner of stuff, quarterbacks recently, and essentially mm -hmm. saying, um, just like we, we had suspected, there's no governor, there's no regulator, there's no leash. There's no caution when it comes to Carson Beck. Normally what, what Kirby does is he doesn't want to turn the ball over. He doesn't want to risk that. He likes to win 14, 10 games if he needs to, he doesn't care about because a W is a W to Kirby. Okay, not to other coaches. He just cares about winning. This year, he doesn't have to keep his eye on the offense or Carson Beck. He trusts him with making the calls, making the audibles, switching things up, seeing defenses. And if all that's the case, with the weaponry around him, a couple of big-time receivers coming in that are not just developmental, that are big-time dudes now, Colby Young, uh, London Humphreys, as well as Oscar Delp, as well as uh, ETN, and a whole slew of offensive linemen that are ready to go, we're geared. Carson Beck could have statistically not gaudy numbers a la Murray or Stafford, but efficiency wise and actual height of into the college football playoff, adding those stats on top of regular season stats, 
he could rival some of those record breaking seasons that those two had. And therefore, on his way to a national championship, Carson Beck could indeed be the single season holder of best season of a quarterback for UGA. And if that's the case, if he has the yards, the touchdowns, and he's in the Heisman conversation and he goes to a national championship and wins it, I think you have to have him second on the list behind Stetson Bennett. Yes, all the ingredients are there for that to take place, Daniel. What's your, you, you gave tease to people. What's your strong opinion about it? All right. All due respect to all of the quarterbacks and th- that have that have come through Georgia. But you gave off a, a, just a heck of a lot of qualifiers there. If he does this, if he does this, and if he does this, and if he does this, <clears throat> I'm here to tell you, Clint, that if Carson Beck doesn't come out and crap the bed this year, okay. If he's just normal, Carson just who Beck, we in, who, not who we not already seen him to be a regular person, right. but normal for Carson Beck. If Carson Beck comes out and is just normal, he may already be the second greatest quarterback in Georgia history. I'm not putting all these qualifiers on it because oh, that's interesting. Yes, he's going he has a chance to win a national championship. And if he mm-hmm. does that and you're ranking people by national championships, then like you're, you know, you're going to have to dig pretty deep to get to the Georgia quarterbacks that are going to compete with him, obviously. And um, no, Georgia didn't make the college football playoff last year in Carson Beck's first year. They did not win the SEC. They did not make the college football playoff, but they did have a pretty dang good season. Yep. <laughs> and a lot of that was was because of Carson Beck's play. Now he's going to come back again this year. George is going to make the college football playoff this year, Clint. Period. George yep. is going to make the college football playoff. The field. That's going to happen. So he's going to be competing for a national championship. He's going to put up great numbers, not yep. Heisman trophy numbers. He's going to do all that. But it's the combination, Clint, of winning football. That's key. And NFL draft pedigree that we've talked about now for a couple weeks on this podcast. Carson Beck is the single most important player in this recent Kirby Smart era for Georgia recruiting. Because he is the guy that takes all of the arguments that any other coaching staff is making away from them and and gives all the power to Kirby Smart. Because the only thing that anybody, Lincoln, Riley, or otherwise can say is you don't want to go to Georgia because we put quarterbacks in the first round here. Look at all the first rounders we've had. Look at all the number one draft picks we've had. Well, if Carson Beck comes out and has the kind of season that we expect, which is the phrasing that was used in this question, if he comes out and has the kind of season we expect, Clint, he is a sure fire top 10 pick in the NFL draft. And if he's a top 10 pick in the NFL draft and Georgia makes the college football playoff and has success on the field, then who are you going to compare him to? I'm sorry. Show me the other top 10 pick who led Georgia to a lot of success on the field. Which one was it? Well, oh, wait, it was none of them. None because, of again, them. the college football playoff and the national championship were not in play for the the Staffords of the world, Daniel. That wasn't a thing. No, they didn't do those things. They, they, we had a shot, and, and that was a very talented team. And then... Alabama smoked us and it all and the wheels fell off. Um, if Carson Beck does that, no, he's not going to pass Stetson Bennett. No, I, I honest to God, can't. if a kid comes in here and wins four national championships in four years, I don't care. I, I, you will not find me saying 
anyone else is the greatest quarterback in the history of Georgia football. You won't find it. But Carson Beck, at this moment, because of what he's going to do for the program, elevating the status of the quarterback position at Georgia, plus the on-field success, he Mm. brings you the best of both worlds. And, And in that respect, he's untouched by any of his... You know, David light. Green, Aaron Murray, True. Buck Ballou, True. Matt Stafford, all of the great, you know, Georgia's has some great quarterbacks, but none of them have done what I just laid out that Carson Beck is primed to do this year. And so I don't think it's going to take a lot for him to find himself in that conversation, Clint. And you can call it recency bias if you want, but those are just the facts that Carson Beck's yeah. about to do something that no other quarterback has done. It's going to be really important for the program. We're going to talk about another question that we got from Mailbag, but first, these. These are, in fact, linked in. Daniel, we know that hiring for small businesses, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. That's LinkedIn right. Jobs is a tool to find the right professionals, right team, faster and free. You might know somebody who has seen a long transition coming that needs to go ahead and hop on LinkedIn for their next great thing. You should send them over here, Daniel. I know you want the mm-hmm. best for them. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. It's a vast network of over a billion professionals, probably who haven't been kicked off Twitter, Mm -hmm. which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have many qualified quality qualified candidates. So easy that 86% of small businesses get that candidate within 24 hours. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free terms and conditions apply we had two i'll tell you this much i'll tell you this much glenn hiring on linkedin is a lot easier than saying quality qualified candidates who i mean my man out here my man my man out here really putting in the work uh on a tuesday for the ad read love to see it um uh had some other questions come in yep um clinton and let's jump into this one this one came via the email locked on bulldogs at gmail.com if you want to hit us up on that get over there email um michael on the email says when talking about freshmen who are going to make an immediate impact this year i never hear anything said about dwight phillips and the question is one word why why (laughs) Why? But but why, though? But why? But, but why? Being the fastest player on the field, I've seen him outrun the secondary and catch passes over the shoulder. I think, and this is where the question turns a corner and gets into the wild territory, I think, Michael. I think he would make a great replacement for McConkey. <laughs> so... Oh and no, then he says, no, no. And then he no, says, caution. Oh yeah. And then he says, Oh yeah, I love your show. So Clint, just like okay. just okay. yeah. He he I'm just, brings I'm just back. caution. This caution. could be Dwight Phillips' uncle, like sending us this question. To be fair, this That's this true. could actually be the young man's cousin. All right. Let's talk us. about Let's who talk about Dwight, Dwight Phillips, Phillips Jr. Phillips. is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um he's pure speed. Is, he's, is what he is. He's octane, bottled up, ready to unleash on the field. It's track well, star. Speed. Are there any? Are there any metrics though? Like what about da- what about like quantifiable data, Clint? That you could sure. use. Speed is kind of subjective. Sure, sure. How about in the hundred meters? He ran ten point four three seconds in a hundred meters, meaning just quickly rounding meters metric and all that uh-huh. fun stuff. Okay. How about ten yards? Over a hundred, uh-huh. oh, the whole entire length of the football field. Oh, yep. A second for every ten yards. How about that? It's real fast. It's it's real. It's real fast. All right. 5'11", 170 pounds. He played all over the field in high school. You use him out of the backfield. You use him in the slot. You 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 put him all over the place. You have him coming around and, and taking end arounds. You have yep. him. You, you have him yep. running wheel routes out of the backfield. All the counts are he's got great hands. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly where George is going to want to use this kid. 
Are they going to want to use him out of the backfield? Are they going to give him a shot, you know, to make a name for himself out wide? You know, he says McConkey, Michael. McConkey does a, a lot of things and is not, he, that's not the comp that you want to be making. I do have a comp, and it is my biggest threat. It is, it is the biggest reason why I think Dwight Phillips Jr.'s name is not being mentioned for immediate impact at Georgia. Yeah. Because, number one, he's not an early enrollee. Yeah, he's not on campus currently getting the reps right now. That's hard. Chauncey Bowens, meanwhile, the running back is on campus right now. And Tate Frazier, although he's not the ru a running back on campus right now, he is viewed by many to be potentially the best out of these three backs. But I do agree that Dwight Phillips offers something that those other two guys don't, and that is the ability to use him in the slot, the ability to use him to catch the ball specifically. And so maybe he comes in, he's going to be utilized more in the passing game. Well, in that case, I think the biggest threat to Dwight Phillips' early playing time is a guy named Anthony Evans III. Um, he was a freshman on last year's team. Saw him take the red shirt. Um, uh, that's why he wasn't returning punts all year. But he's going to be returning punts all year this year. But a very similar body type to Dwight Phillips. Anthony Ed, uh, Anthony Evans is 5'11", 170, uh, built almost the same as this young man, but he has a year on campus. He has a year in the playbook, in the system, working with Mike Bobo. And so I think you're actually going to see, I think if you're talking to me about guys who aren't getting talked about enough that are going to make an impact on this Georgia football team, Anthony Evans might be at the top of my list. When we do our show about most underrated or most under talked about guys heading into the season, he's going to be at or near the top of my list. I think he's the biggest threat actually for Dwight Phillips playing time. I don't think it's the other backs because I think to Michael's point, Dwight Phillips does things that Tay Frazier can't do. He does yeah, things yeah. that Chauncey yeah. Bowens can't do. And so I don't think it's the other freshman backs that are his biggest threat. But I do think Georgia's got some guys, but that's okay for Dwight Phillips. He yeah. can learn I, and he can develop. By the way, the Freudian slip, I don't know who you know that's – you mean Nate uh, Frazier. Um, oh, sorry. It's okay. Yeah, no, it's, I do mean Nate Frazier. I, I don't – I didn't want the people in the comments getting all up in arms, which they will well, anyway. it's mostly they, Alabama fans in the comments, so. Um, you're dead on. I, I am excited for this. However, when you're talking – um, especially receiving out of the backfield, Daniel. A lot of this has to go hand in hand with protection and getting out, slipping out after you do a chip block on somebody or getting route and getting mesh points and quick uh, checks with Carson Beck. And that takes time. That sort of, that sort of depth of knowledge mm -hmm. and understanding in the passing game is more complex than it is. Again, we've said easy spot for freshmen to come in and have an impact immediately is run to daylight through the left side. Go. Um, it's it's not a hard concept. You have to set up blocks. And you have to you have to read and and go to daylight. But especially in the passing game, if that's where he is, and if he has soft hands, he's able to do it. He's gonna catch on with that. That is true. But it's going to take some time. I think you're exactly right. And I think receiving wise, if you look at even like Kenny McIntosh, right? You you look at guys like that, that had the hands coming out of the backfield that had very soft, very pliable skills out there. It wasn't immediate right away. Yeah. And Brian Harrion, same thing. He had that ability. That was a big asset to the team instead of rushing the ball. So it's going to take some time if he does catch on. And if he is able to do that, he we've seen this from Kirby Smart, Mike Bobo, Todd Munkin, and the rest of the staff. He will have a big time role in the offense. Like, oh, absolutely. He will find his way on the field because the concepts that Georgia wants to do in the passing game involve the running back. It is not void of that. And as a matter of fact, I ever, I mean, we all can hearken back to the one game Florida decided to go ahead and get Kirby on with the wheel route coming out of the backfield mm. and that haunted us. And Kirby said, okay, fine. I'll let's focus on that as well. And it was well in our playbook in our bag of tricks. That's still there. 
and it's a concept. It's an understanding that that needs to be there. So I'm excited for him. Dwight Phillips is faster than fast. The other guy I was thinking of was uh, Sokovi White as well coming in. Mm -hmm. He's a little satellite player, a little quick titch, mm -hmm. a quick twitch fiber mm -hmm. guy. Um, but he, quality he runs, qualified candidates. He was he was uh, slower in the hundred meter, Daniel, than uh, Dwight Phillips. So Dwight Phillips, tell your nephew. We're happy he's here. Okay. Oh, Michael, he's special. Tell, tell your he's nephew special. that we're we are thrilled he's a Georgia Bulldog. And Correct. um, you don't gotta burst onto campus like a like a ball on fire just to maybe he will, but even if he doesn't, that's okay. We've got more that we're gonna discuss. One last question we want to get to, but first want to talk about these. And these are eBay motors. Passion, drive, patience. That's the formula for winning championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need. Maintain your vehicle and le level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether it's speed, power, style, eBay Motors has you covered. Over 122 million parts, your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. eBay guaranteed uh, fit is guaranteed for your ride every time or your money back. Because eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. Well, all the parts you need and the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Well, the 199s here, and they are not going to let me live down the, the slip of the tongue from last segment, Daniel. That's going to just be, It's. I'm going to own it. I'm going to own it. I am I might put it on a t-shirt. Might you? By yeah. the way, shout out to Tate Frazier, host of the One Shining podcast. Um, fantastic <laughs> college basketball podcast. I don't know if you know this, Clint, but it's been college basketball season lately. I've been listening to a lot of college basketball content. Tate Frazier, One Shining podcast. Hey, heck of a show. Shout out to him. Would love to have you on sometime, Tate. We um, Nate Frazier would also love to have you on sometime. Future Georgia Open star at the running invite. back position. And so don't get those two guys confused. Names are very similar. I can't imagine there's much else that's very similar about them. But um, <laughs> Clint, we got one more. We got one more yes. topic to discuss. And that is um, got a got a um, a question from a, a loyal listener to the show. Um, his name's John Williams. And uh, Georgia fans, if you're not familiar with our boy, John, um, uh, you should get familiar with him. Not this year or next year, because SEC scheduling is the laziest thing in the history of the world. But he's the host of Locked On Sooners, um, a, a show covering the newest member of the SEC, the Oklahoma Sooners. And um, so John asks... Clint, what are going to be the toughest SEC games for yeah. Oklahoma and Texas in 2024? And so this is part of this question has to do with Georgia. And so mm -hmm. we will allow it. We will allow it on our mailbag, John. Um, uh, even though your team doesn't play Georgia, you did throw Texas in there. And so you did. it, you it did. qualifies now for as a Georgia related question. Now, before so, we get going, going, I do I do have to come at you, John, because I did say on Twitter, you said the best walk on in college football history. You said Stetson Bennett, Eli Manning, his way to a couple of championships. I just got to tell you right now. Row, 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 row. That ain't going to fly here. Law dog. No, okay? John. Just, no, so, John. Easy on that one, brother. Why don't, easy you, slow, on that one. Why don't you slow down? We do However, love. Oklahoma legend and current Philadelphia Eagles starting quarterback. Um, we we do we do Jaylen love Hurts him. Is yeah. fantastic, fantastic Oklahoma Sooner a lot. Love him. Keep it yeah. keep it going. Okay, let's get down to this question because the question Texas and Oklahoma. Really quick off the bat, Texas has the easiest SEC schedule we have seen in some time. I, I'm going to list you. It's the fascinating because you know that Texas plays Georgia, and sure. like that is that's obviously the thing I would guess that Georgia fans, and maybe you know because it's kind of getting some talk in the offseason because Harbaugh and na defending yeah. national champions. Texas plays Michigan in the non con. Okay. But 
Listen to the rest of of Texas's SEC schedule. This is unbelievable. Mississippi State coming off of a roster turnover, co- coaching turnover. Okay, just you don't have to quan- qualify Mississippi State. It's Mississippi State. Oklahoma, who they play every single year, they're very okay. familiar with. Okay, great. Red River, uh, Georgia. Okay, Vanderbilt. Okay, Florida. Not great. Arkansas. Okay, worse. Kentucky. <laughs> A&M. Now list the harder teams. Okay, I, I'll tr- I'll try. <laughs> Georgia. That's that's it. End Just- of list. This is the easiest conference schedule I I think you could put together. Like you could sub you could probably sub I mean of these A&M teams, for Missouri is is A&M yeah, going to be I, better than Missouri? They're going to be on the same. They level. might not be. They might no, not be. I is think this actually be other than Georgia? Is this? Do they play other than Georgia? The seven worst teams in the SEC, and I'm sorry, Oklahoma fans, I'm including you in that. You're in there. You're in there, Oklahoma fan. If I were to tell you, if I was going to use seven wins, above or below seven wins. And I was to list all those teams, and you have to tell me which one. If it's you six are and a half wins, conference wins, I'm definitely taking the over seven. I think is a seven's a push because no, they're not beating well, Georgia. No, what I was saying is of their opponents. If I listed their opponents and then say, "Tell me which oh. teams are going to win above seven games of oh, the entire no. year, conference games." Op- no, I'm oh. I'm talking for the entire Just, year. Yeah, yeah, Vanderbilt's not. No, Florida's not. No, Arkansas may. But Kentucky, come on, Kentucky ain't come on. Texas has got the weakest, softest schedule. So the biggest schedule for them is it's it's us. It's Georgia. It's yeah, that's October nineteenth. It's the after... only tough conference game. I mean, I know A and M rivalry game. No, like no, that'll be A and M's a no, dumpster I mean, fire. A and M is an absolute dumpster fire. But listen, here's what I know. That game Crazy. is in College Station. Yeah, <laughs> and though like. <laughs> They they gonna be fired up for that, Clint. <laughs> they gonna be they gonna be doing their little dances, Clint. They gonna be fired up for that one. Listen, Texas A and M would go zero and eleven and win that game yeah. and be and be happy and and I get a raise for you. all staff. It's yes. the biggest little brother energy you could possibly By the way, muster for them Texas, that. Texas, you're game. not the level that you think you are because you lost to Washington. In last year's play, and they got they got boat raced by a better team. So just wow. slow down on that. It's in Sark they trust. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let's head over let's to go. Oklahoma. Oklahoma has a much more difficult conference schedule, even though they do not draw Georgia. Oklahoma in the conference starts off Tennessee at home and then at Auburn. Those two games, by the way, are harder than any two games that Texas has other than Georgia. Like those, the first two games in the conference season. Then they go to Texas of the Red River, home against South Carolina. That's probably the team. You could probably throw South Carolina in there. That's instead of AM. That might have been the other team. At Ole Miss, that's a very difficult game. At Missouri, that's going to be another difficult game for Oklahoma. Home against Alabama, good God, and then at LSU to end the season. John, T's and P's, brother. John, your Sooners. You tell me, John, how many conference wins for Oklahoma this year? Because I'm not, I'm not loving it. I'm not um, loving what I'm seeing. You getting baptized in the SEC real quick? Like this ain't oh. like. Before the pastor says in the name of and you just down like like you just got he gets nothing out of and you just you got it's in the ocean too you got salt water coming up your nose with it because there was a jellyfish involved you didn't see it <laughs> you didn't see you didn't there see is, it. my man you, we didn't put out an episode yesterday because of Easter and because of recording on Easter and busy schedules and my man out here now talking on Tuesday about getting <laughs> baptized and he just. Whew. You go um, to Auburn. It's going to be tough. Mm, that's going to be tough, John. Stop playing and stop thinking you're better than them. It doesn't matter. You're at Auburn. Jordan Harris Stadium is no joke. Um, Ole Miss got a team this year, and the growth is yeah. going to be hopping down there. 
But I truly think that the the hardest game on the schedule, you might catch Alabama sleeping. Alabama's going to be a good team. You might catch them sleeping coming up to Oklahoma. Okay, maybe. But to end the season at LSU, and LSU might have a shot to do something special to get in the playoff and to continue this. That's going to be, and if that's a night game, I, I don't care what the spread is. I'm taking LSU to cover that spread if it's a night game. And it's going to be, it's, it's a tough schedule, and it's not because I think Oklahoma is that much worse than Texas. Just no. to clarify, no, nope. I don't think Oklahoma is going to be that much worse than Texas. Probably worse than Texas, but not that much worse than Texas. But the schedules are just oh, barf. Uh, he's Clint. I'm Daniel. Thanks to everybody. Um, sorry if we didn't get to your question today. We will we'll put it on the next one. Good Keep one. sending us your questions if you've got them, and we'd love to cover them. We'll be back later this week with lots more about the Georgia Bulldogs here on the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast, your team every day. We'll see you all next time.